Okay, we're gonna look at graphing when we've got e and when we've got natural log. So the first question here, we're gonna graph y equals e to the exponent x. This is actually an exponential function again. So this would have been in the exponential um, function chapter had we learned about e. Um, but there's a relationship between that and logarithm, so we've got it here. So just a reminder that exponential was, they, there was that common point of an x-intercept at 1, um, and it would have this general shape here with an asymptote here. So just to visualize that exponential growth again. So let's do uh, a table of values for y equals e to the x graph. So we're choosing x values again because we're substituting that in. So for example, you're gonna calculate e to the negative two. So right now we're gonna use our calculators to do that. So you put that in your calculator and you're gonna notice you're gonna get 0 0.14. e to the negative one, you're gonna put that in your calculator and you're gonna get 0 0.37. e to the zero, well of course anything to the exponent of zero is one. e to the one would be the value of e, so that's 2.7. And then e squared, you're going to use your calculator again, and you're going to get 7.4. So we can plot these points. So I need a scale. Negative 2 and 0 0.14, so we're just estimating. That's really close to the asymptote. Negative 1 and 0.37, so that's close to a third, because that's what 0.33 would be. 0, 1. 1 and 2.7, so that's a really key point here. I want to label that point because I want it to be very clear that was the E value. And 2 and 7.4 is off my uh, grid, so I don't necessarily need to plot that point. So we're going to just connect this down here and draw your asymptote in. Now, you will most likely or potentially get asked this question without a calculator. So what would we do if we didn't have a calculator? How would we get these answers? Well, I'm going to show you a table again and my thoughts on how I would do that. So when I'm plugging in e to the negative 2 without a calculator, I'm just going to leave it as e to the negative 2 and say that I know that's 1 over e squared. I know e is close to 2 point, or sorry, it's close to 3, it's 2.7. So this would be like 3 squared would be 1 ninth, 4 squared would be 1 quarter, closer. So it's closer to 1 ninth. Well, I can't really clearly plot that. If I want to label that point, I would label it negative 2 and e to the negative 2. But I'll just make sure my point's really close to the asymptote, and it's fine. e to the negative 1 is 1 over e, which is 1 over 2.7. Well, that's basically approximately 1 third. I can't tell the difference between 1 third and 1, point, 1 over 2.7 necessarily in my point, and I can simply label that point so that it is clear that that's the point negative 1, and 1 over 2.7, or you can say 1 over e even. So that's what this point is right here. That point we already talked about without a calculator is the is uh, anything to exponent 0 is 1. I didn't need a calculator for this one. e to the 1 is 2.7, and this is just going to be e squared. I, don't, I didn't even plot that point. So really, if you've got these three points, you've got enough of your graph and you know what approaches the asymptote. So you do not need a calculator to necessarily graph that. But I thought it was valuable to kind of just do some, to practice what it would look like if you did have decimals.